hello guys welcome to solving solutions your number one channel where you get solutions to all your solving problems it's nice having you in class again today how have you been and um, we are going to look at um, a question on genetic surveying today right good we are going to look at um, should i say the relationship between geodetic latitude reduced latitude and um, geocentric latitude we are going to leave um, a short note on each of them on the description section where you can actually maybe see the meaning or maybe a few like um, a short yeah a short explanation on each of those um, latitudes now um, before we continue we want to um, thank you for coming around Thanks for coming to class today. If you are a new viewer, please um, encourage us by subscribing. And if you are a returning viewer, thanks for always um, checking up on us. And also, we have a training coming up on the channel. Um, the details to that training will be, the flyer will be on this video. And then you would also see the registration link um, on the description section. You can um, encourage us by um, registering or enrolling or maybe registering for others for as many persons as you can all right they say them um, if the geodetic latitude is equal to 10 degrees and then um, 20 degrees find the corresponding values of the geocentric latitude and the, the reduced latitude so we gave um, a key okay we are given the semi-major axis and we were also given the flattening right good so we are given the some major axis which is a and then we are given the flattening which is um, 1 over um, 300.8 then these are semi major axis which is what a now they say the okay the attempt for the solution the key on the question is that our theta what looks like theta is actually the geodetic latitude which was the value given to us and then we are trying to what determine the reduced latitude and what the geocentric latitude now for this particular question we are going to use some formulae um, some of which are to get our b which is what beta let's call it beta to get our to get our reduced latitude we are going to use this formula so let's just call it b so tan b is equal to tan theta into one minus eccentricity squared then you now find the square root of one minus m eccentricity squared right good e is m eccentricity now we have um, whenever you see um, any quantity raised to power half it simply means the square root of that quantity right good the square root of that value or whatever we want to call it then the tan of the geocentric is equal to tan theta into one minus what e squared the second does not have any square root it was only the first one that has what square root and the one that has square root is actually what b and our b is what our reduced latitude good these are some foundations you need to understand now first let's get the value of what e because if you look at the formula now to get b we have our theta but we don't have our e right from the question or from the parameters given to us on the question which is um, the semi major axis and the flattening we are not given our e but we can actually determine our e from what was given to us right so first let's get the value of e but f is equal to what a minus b all over a and a is simply what the semi major axis b the semi minor axis that's just the key to a and b good so since um, f is equal to a minus b all over a it implies that when this multiplies this and this multiplies this they call it um, cross multiplication in mathematics right good because we want to make b the subject of the formula right good so um we also have a video like yeah we have a video like this on the channel where we describe some of these um, basic parameters in genetic solving perhaps we'll leave that um, video the link to that video in the description section as well so that you get the basics so now we have um, f equal to a minus b over so when we cross multiply we have what a f equal to a minus b which is this um, particular expression you can see here right good therefore making b the subject of the formula means our a will cross over to this side these are just some basic stuff so our minus b will now be what a f minus a however what we need is b not minus b right therefore we are just going to multiply through this expression or through this equation by what minus one so when we multiply through this equation by minus one we now have what b equal to a minus what a f take note 
this um, formula is actually very very important also remember that your eccentricity is equal to what the square root of a squared minus b squared all over a the square root only what operates in the numerator it does not affect the denominator pay attention to that as well our eccentricity is equal to what a squared minus b squared all over a so having established this fact we already have our what we already know the formula for let's say getting our b so we can now just do what we can just substitute and then we proceed so let's see how that goes now to get e we need to determine b and our b is equal to what a minus what a f you know how we got that right so the next thing is for us to substitute so if you have your calculator please um, bring out your calculator and press this along with us so you already know that our a was given in the question as what 637 7304 minus af now the reason why you are having this over this is because we have our numerator for f here as one so when this a multiplies that one you still have that a that's very simple right good then you now divide it by what we have in our denominator that's why we have something like this so you should not get it confused if this f was not having one over 300.8 and it was having anything other than one then we would have multiplied but since it is one multiplying by one will still give you what that same number right good so we have 6377304 minus 6377304 divided by what 300.8 so when we um, please ensure you press this on your calculator please so we now have when we find this quotient we have something like 21201.14362 so subtracting this our quotient from a we have something like this which is what 6356102.856 and this is now the value for what b are we together so b is our what our semi minor axis now substitute b into e remember the formula for e we had the other time which is what e equals to the square root of a squared minus b squared all over what a so we are substituting the value of b into e because that was the only parameter left for us to determine e so our a is known minus a squared rather a squared minus what our b which we just determined some seconds ago right squared divided by what our a now another secret to achieving the success or maybe making all of these things very fast is that if you have a calculator like this it's always easier for you to store these values on your calculator so maybe you have an alphabet we have the letters a to like okay a to f we have x y m of the alphabet right so you can just use each of these letters of the alphabet to store what your values you already have a so you store your a on a you have b you store your b on b maybe if you don't want to store okay you can even store your f on f good so by the time you're progressing you just what you just record the value so it's actually very important now for the purpose of okay this video let's just show you how you do that let's say we have um six sorry we have um, um six three seven seven three zero four right so the next thing is what for you to store you do what shift store you choose the letter so it has been stored on a so anytime we say alpha a that value comes up you can see that right same thing for b since we already know what b is where is our b our b is what um we have m six three five six one zero two point eight five six right good shift store you select the letter so when you come to alpha b you still have it stored so with this all you need to do is to what is to just record the values because you can't always be typing them out one after the other right good so now let's see how it goes so to get our e is very simple since it's actually a fraction let's do this so we have what square root of what since we already know that this is a and this is b so we can just say alpha a squared right minus what alpha b squared right good alpha a good so this is actually the value of what your eccentricity right good so with this you can what you can actually move on with the calculation process good so with this you can do what you can proceed with your calculations right now the next thing is that this is the value of e so you can simply sorry let's record the answer since this is the value of e you can simply save this as what shift um, store what e you already know that you have your a your b and what your e stored on your calculator as you can see this is the value of a this is the value of b and then this is the value of what e 
these are or this can be seen as our variables or the inputs in the formula right good so since we have been able to get our e that was just a little bit of digression to see the okay an easier way of going uh, around the stuff good so since we have gotten our e we can now easily substitute into the formula remember the formula is what to get b which is our reduced latitude we have what um tan theta into one minus e squared then the square root right with raised to power half that's the square root so now let's see how this goes now there is an operation there is an order i use for this operation i don't know if that's what you are used to but i will just have to share it with you now since we already know that tan b is equal to tan theta into one minus e squared raised to power half which is the square root right so let's go let's go this way the first thing now is that we say what one minus e squared right one minus what alpha e squared we already have our e stored on the calculator so there's no need for us to type it imagine you typing 0 0.0814732 all of those values you know you might make a mistake and even without making a mistake it's, it's actually time consuming so when you store it on your calculator the best you can always do is to what is to recall so we have one minus e squared which is this right good so we are trying to tackle this first part of what the formula then the next thing is what the square root remember we told you raised to power half is simply what square root so we say square root of answer right so we have something like this good then times what tan 10 so we have this so when we have this which is simply an equivalent of this right so since we already have this remember that our b is having tan therefore for us to have b then we need to do what the tan inverse right so the tan inverse is what simply um, shift tan then the tan inverse is out answer then we have something like this so you just hit the degree minute and seconds then you will see that you have what 9 degrees 58 minutes 2.72 seconds so that's how you what you apply the formula very simple and short now let's look at the second part of the let's look at the second part of this question we want to get what the geocentric latitude from the given what geodetic latitude right so now the formula is that we have what tan theta into 1 minus e squared this does not have any square root so now let's see our e is already saved so we have what one minus what alpha e then we square it without having any square root this time around right which is this so times what tan 10 degrees which is what which is this value you can see now on the calculator right good and i think okay that's the same value you can see here so the next thing is what we find the tan inverse of this particular last answer we just got so shift tan answer it gives us a value then we convert it to degree minute and second so you can see we have 9 degrees 58 56 minutes 5.81 seconds so that's how you go about the operation so you can still do the same thing for what when the geodetic latitude is 20 degrees and as we have explained you just do what you already have all the parameters you need you have your eccentricity you have you have eccentricity stored on your calculator you already know what or maybe how to apply it so you just do what one minus your eccentricity squared right good one minus your eccentricity squared then you find the square root of that answer then you multiply it by what tan 20 so you should be able to arrive at what 19 point sorry 19 degrees 56 minutes 19.53 seconds so same thing for what the geocentric latitude when your geodetic latitude is what 20 right i believe um, this was quite simple and it was exhaustive now um, we have a tax for you for theta equal to 0 70 35 determine the equivalent um, reduced and um, geocentric latitudes respectively good luck now this will actually help you practice what you've just learned today because um, actually when you keep practicing some things you actually get better at them Please do not make a mistake for ease or let's say for convenience or maybe for you to be sure of what you're doing. Ensure you store your values on your calculator. And again, in geodetic surveying, let's say in geodesy, eh, geodesy generally, yeah, in geodesy generally, we don't always approximate. So when you have your, your answers to maybe depending on the configuration of your calculator or specification of your calculator, if it's giving you up to 10, 10 places of decimal, ensure that you keep those 10 places of decimal because you would need them. Are we together so that's why it's always good to store your values in your calculator especially when you're working on stuff like geodetic surveying good or maybe geodesy so yeah thanks for coming to class please do not forget to enroll for the program and please do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you've not done that you can always support us there are links to supporting us on the description section of this video or the description section of the channel 
we are going to see you on our next video until then keep being good at what you're doing and then um, have a nice time bye